It's a real pleasure, obviously, to be here. Um, we're from UCL. My name is Sean, and to my left we have Gareth and Emma Pola. And if you don't already know, UCL is a broad-based department, including biological, social, and material culture. And our project that we'd like to talk to you about, APE, um, it aims, not unlike the education program at the RAE, to bring anthropology to wider and younger audiences. So, why would we want to do this? Well, I know it's certainly true for myself and for these guys, and I'm pretty sure that most of you would agree with me, that embarking upon this journey of becoming an anthropologist has really enabled me to open my eyes and my heart and my mind to completely new ways of thinking about the world. It's made me challenge any inherent value judgments that I might have been carrying around with me unknowingly. It's made me situate myself within a much wider world and really question the implications of my actions within that world. And at its really most basic, it's made me appreciate that our way of being in the world is just one way and not the way. So if having an education in anthropology has enabled me to have this disposition, this anthropological mindset with which to approach my everyday life and my academic life, then what if we brought that sort of education to primary schools? What if we had generations of younger children coming out of school with this anthropological mindset? One which doesn't judge, one which doesn't make assumptions, one which doesn't make generalizations, and one which really makes people think critically. Well, wouldn't that be really cool? <laughs> um, and yes, you can accuse us of being, you know, cheesy and idealistic, but I don't think that's a bad thing. <laughs> So I'm going to hand you over to Gareth, he'll take you through the uh, teaching philosophy and then we'll outline a part of the syllabus that we've designed before I tell you about our really exciting pilot day. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. So uh, we've all been brought together through a course that was called uh, Applied Anthropology um, and it was a really good contentious kind of dialogical course where it was seminar based and one of the things that we were exposed to was um, the ideas of Carlo Freire um, and his idea of critical pedagogy. And this isn't our kind of, it's less a, a rigid foundation as kind of traces of inspiration that, are, that kind of started us off in the direction that we've gone in. And so we're really encouraged by Freire and his idea of uh, education that it uh, encourages a critical dialogue, um, challenging kind of uh, Foucault's grand narratives and kind of his idea of uh, releasing the oppressed from the oppressor in their mind. And although our, our syllabus is not uh, that explicitly radical, we, we feel that it has been inspired by his um, ideas. And one of the things that, that is manifested in, 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 the, in each of the three pronged uh, branches of our syllabus, which are material culture, biological anthropology, and social anthropology, um, is the idea of asking the students, um, uh, you know, what you would do, so putting them into a, a situation, um, for example, an ecological scenario, and offering them up the idea to uh, imagine themselves there, um, and before we kind of give them any facts, to offer them up to, to think about the, the structure of their thought, and the way that they're going to go. So that involves role plays. So we might give a, a sketch of a, a small kind of simplified ethnography of somewhere in rural India or something, and then um, encourage the students to imagine themselves there or uh, think about uh, you know their, their daily course of events. Um, and it's all, but it's not all exoticizing. We kind of aim to bring it home by having show and tell days and encouraging uh, the students to think about the implications for their, for their own lives. Um, but the last point is that we had also a, a kind of uh, pragmatic incentive to introduce anthropology into primary school just for the, um, for the good of the discipline, to kind of uh, avoid 
a kind of narrowing of the demographic that goes into studying anthropology in, in, in university, which is a possibility with the fees. We wanted to kind of um, give opportunities uh, across the board to be exposed to anthropological ideas. Um, so I'll quickly talk about our first form, which is material culture, um, which is unique to UCL. Um, and we'll discuss that later. We don't want them to be um, UCL-centric, but we feel like it's a, a good uh, way to start the simplest because it's interactive. Um, so we, in, our, in our lessons, we bring in uh, ethnographic objects, and it'd be very visual-based and tactile-based, so that there's kind of a, a concrete um, point of discussion. Um, so when we did our pilot day, <coughs> which we'll talk about later, we brought in um, some ethnographic objects and also had big images of uh, environments and uh, material cultures of, of different people and then uh, got the students to think about uh, why they would use certain objects and how they use certain objects and how uh, our own material cultures differs from other material cultures and, and the implications for that. Um, we admit that uh, the syllabus is kind of functionalist, which is a kind of <laughs> uh, taboo in modern anthropology, but we feel that that's uh, a good intuitive place to start if we, if we offer a, um, a picture of the, the rainforest and ask uh, why uh, certain material cultures would be used there, then our first point of call is their utilitarian value. So this is uh, a real uh, starting point, but um, anyway, we'll open that up for the discussion then. Over to Rupa. <laughs> so as Gareth was saying, I'll just mention it now, um, it's very functionalist in what we were introducing with the social side. But we wanted to create this idea and show the students that our way of doing something is not the only way of doing something, that our culture is just one culture among a huge variety that we have in the world. And also to introduce this idea of sort of sensibility, so not have children giggling when they see half-naked Yanomami from the Amazon, for example, and instead show them, hey, you guys, there are other cultures out there. Introduce them to ethnographic material. And not try and make, and rather than making it sort of like glorified geography, uh, we <laughs> divided it into two sections. So the first one that we did was I showed some videos. Um, and I'm not sure if any of you have seen it, but there's a human planet video of children in the Amazon hunting massive, giant um, Goliath spiders and then eating them. And it's a bit gross, admittedly, but and the children were squeam squeamish and like, Ugh. but if you introduce the idea of, hey, well, this is where they live and this is what they like to eat, this is very similar to going around to the corner shop and say, buy a pack of crisps. When they thought of it like that, the children begin to think, oh yeah, so there are different cultures, mine's just not the same, and simply because they don't have packets of crisps does not mean that they're poor or less well evolved socially than we are. And then the next thing that we did was to introduce what the anthropologist does. So we had sort of like a role play game where we had tables separated out and we put pictures of different cultures showing different them doing different things with maps of the world, and then we had these field journals that we gave to the children so they could kind of be the anthropologists, write down their things. And then we had different questions that they'd have to answer. And rather than just sort of saying, <coughs> look at the picture and tell us what you see, what it was was, who do you think in charge? Do they look healthy? Describe the houses. What are they made from? That sort of thing that just makes the children slightly more sort of look at them and analyse the pictures that they were seeing slightly more critically and sort of established this platform for teaching anthropology and understanding anthropology. <coughs> so moving on from there, in the biological side, now we haven't tested this one out yet because it's full day and uh, the pilot day that um, Sean will talk about was just material culture and social. But what we want to focus on is the human family tree and the story of human evolution. And this flows quite well from the material culture and the social where we're trying to introduce ideas of similarity and difference at the same time. Now with this we want to show, you know, we have evolved from the same place, we are the same people, we may look different, but we are all humans. Um, and the way that we're going to 
do that is sort of start with the individual <coughs> and home family tree, so all the children's mother, father, etc., and expand out to humans and then how we're related to primates. So introduce the idea that we are not, you know, it didn't go chimpanzee human overnight as many people do believe that we were once chimpanzees, which is in fact wrong. Um, and also this introduction of human ancestors to show that we have evolved over a long period of time and that we've accumulated culture um, along the way. So the human ancestors that we were thinking of introducing, rather than, I'm not sure if there's any biological anthropologists here, but you'll know there are, if you are, there are quite a lot of human ancestors. But we were going to focus on Lucy, so a Nostropithecus afarensis, um, Narakotomi boys, so that's a Homo erectus, and sort of a couple of them that the children can relate to, so like they've got a name, they're a full body, but then at the same time that they understand sort of, oh yeah, so we could have been like this once before. And we're going to do that by bipedalism, skull morphology and dentition, and having these really interactive games that they can play, so trying out different theories of why bipedalism evolved, why um, dentition, so different foods, having them try that out, and also skull morphology, so how like we've changed, how our brains have developed, and really, really sort of, not drill home, but get the children to hopefully interactively understand that we didn't just one day like monkeys in trees and then the next day humans, but instead that we are one small species, even though there's lots of us, that evolved over a long period of time. And that's what I want to get home. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so we've been working on this project for the past four or five months. Um, and during that time, we've looked at the national curriculum, seeing what schools are already doing been completely <laughs> debating what we want to include, what we can include and what have you. And we feel that schools are already under a lot of pressure with attainment targets and new initiatives coming in all of the time. So the best way that we feel at the moment to roll this out is through workshops. Um, and as Adam Amapola said, the one we did uh, was social material. So just before Christmas, we went to Gorse Community School in Swansea. We worked with their lovely year fours. Very mind, they're only eight and nine years old. And we started the day by asking them if they knew what anthropology was. And unsurprisingly, no, they didn't. But most adults don't, right? Um, but they could spell it, which I was pretty impressed with. Um, and as you've seen from the syllabus, we have loads of really interactive materials. I think that's really important to be colourful for the students. Um, and we each gave them a name badge of famous anthropologists, so they could really get that sense of being the anthropologist, along with their field journal, which gave them something to work in throughout the day, and also something they could take away and show their family and friends and what have you. Um, and the main thing we found is that we really managed to change their perspectives. So at the beginning of the day, we showed them the video of the tarantulas, and they were like, oh, that's disgusting. And you know, they thought that people who did things differently were weird, and that they weren't as good as us, or that they were poor. And actually, by the end of the day, they were coming up with things like, people do things differently, but that doesn't make it weird or wrong. Or people all over the world have different cultures, and other things like that. But my favourite, four days after we left, one of the students said to the head, when I grow up, I want to be an anthropologist. I was quite impressed with that. <laughs> so, you know, it was our first day, and obviously we are to open to criticism. We got some really great feedback from the teachers and from the students, from the head. They're really excited to have us back. Um, and we're hoping to maybe go and do the biological uh, soon. So, yeah, it was a really exciting day. Gareth, do you want to pull my name? Uh, <coughs> the project so far is, uh, has a few rough patches and consistencies, just minor ones, that, and that's because it's still a, a work in progress and we really want to encourage people to get involved if they want to get involved and offer us up some uh, constructive criticism. We have a few um, concrete uh, aims and projects in the future, uh, we've got um, some workshops organised in May uh, for a homeschooling group, which is uh, quite exciting. But there's other things that we want to look in, such as, into, such as uh, research into the national curriculums and exactly how um, our workshops can fit in with different schools uh, and funding for that. 
also, we recognize that the, the workshops really need to be taught by people that have um, some idea of what anthropology is. So it's, it would be hard just to offer up um, so, uh, the literature to a teacher and expect them to teach it. So perhaps some workshops for teaching the teachers um, would be a good idea. Um, <coughs> So, yeah, and we also thought about linking up with the REI. Uh, we don't know exactly how that could happen, but we were excited about <laughs> um, Yeah, and so we look forward to your um, criticism and uh, opportunities for expansion. Okay, thank you.